is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Can I hear some rejoicing this morning? Anyone know the joy of your salvation? Come on. Let's make some noise in the house today. Psalm 145 says, I will exalt you, my God, O King. I will bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you. I will praise your name. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. One generation shall praise your works to another and declare your mighty acts. I will meditate on the glorious splendor of your majesty. Men shall speak of your awesome acts and I will declare your greatness. Come on, let's just declare his greatness this morning. Hallelujah. For the Lord is gracious and full of compassion. The Lord is good to all. He's a good God, amen. All your works shall praise you and your saints shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and talk of your power. For your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures forever. Hallelujah. You know, the third of the Ten Commandments recognizes the fact that God has given us something so beautiful and so precious, and that is His name. Exodus 20 says, don't take the name. Somebody say the name. The name of the Lord your God in vain. He's not only invited us into relationship with Him, but He's given us a name. It is a name above every other name. His name is holy. Come on, church. His name is powerful. The Bible says that He is El Shaddai. The Lord God Almighty. He is El Elyon, the Most High God. He's Adonai. He's God, our Master, the one we bow to, the one we surrendered to this morning. He's Elohim. He's Lord God all by Himself. Uh, hallelujah. He is uh, Yahweh which means He is Lord God, Jehovah. Jehovah Jireh, your provider. Jehovah Nissi, your victory. Jehovah Roy, your shepherd. <laughs> ah, he's Jehovah Shalom, your peace in the midst of the storm that you're in this morning. He's Jehovah Chitzikidu, the Lord who is your righteousness. Hallelujah. He's Jehovah Rapha. He is the Lord, your healer. I want to tell you this morning that when we recognize His name, we don't take His name in vain. We don't take His name for granted. We put His name on our lips. When God hears His name, He always moves. He always responds. So come on right now, lift your hands. Lift your hearts, lift your voices, just begin to exalt Him, just begin to magnify Him this morning. Hallelujah! We bless You, Lord! Your great name! Your great praise. Hallelujah. The test.
too good. Yeah. I live stories that have proved your faithfulness. I've seen miracles my mind can comprehend. There is beauty in what I can understand. Cause Jesus, it's you. Yes, Jesus, it's you. And I believe you're the one do working God. You're the one do working God. All the miracles I've seen, you're too good to not believe. You're the one do working God. And you're here. You're too good to not believe, too good to not believe, too good to not believe. Oh. And I can resurrect a man with my own hands. Just the mention of.
the name of Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Over and
deserve the praise. You deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. Worthy is your name. Jesus, you deserve. this morning it's the altar of your own heart the fire of God is burning on that altar and while you are worshiping and singing your love songs it's like incense being poured forth onto the fiery coal of that altar today and the incense the fragrance of your worship is rising, 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 rising up. Come on, just worship this morning. Worship with your spiritual tongue. Sing the songs of the Spirit.
Jesus, we lift you up this morning. We lift your banner of praise. We lift your throne of worship in this place and over this nation today, God. Lord, would you visit the United Kingdom? Would you visit Great Britain, God, with another mighty move, a tsunami of spiritual awakening, God? You've done it before. You've done it in the past. You can do it again. You will do it now. If your people call, cry, stand in the gap this morning. God, send the rain of heaven upon our dry, parched and thirsty land. God, revive this generation. Mighty God, save them. Father, swoop them with your mighty hand into your kingdom. You promised you'd give us the nations. Today, give us this nation that we would see an end time harvest never witnessed before. In Jesus' name. Come on, if you believe that, just give a final shout of praise. God, we're rejoicing. We're celebrating already because of what you're about to do, because of what's about to break. Hallelujah! Would you high five someone this morning and say, get ready, get ready. Don't just get ready for His coming. He is coming. But get ready for the greatest move of God you've ever seen, you've ever witnessed. Hallelujah. My Lord, my Lord, my Lord. Well, take your seats if you can this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Well, we are having a great celebration and community outreach next week with the Jubilee celebration. I want to tell you that we have had over 500 registrations from out there in the community, and we have a week to go. So we're planning for 1,000. Now listen, about 60% or more of those are unchurched people not part of our family, which is amazing. So you better get your names registered. And uh, please, we want to ask whether you will help. We have Danita and Breda, who will be in the foyer this morning. Lots of volunteers, ministry of helps needed. And also, um, we have a whole number of brochures. Jamie, won't you just give me one, please? I think it's on there in my iPad, if you just grab it for me next to my seat. Um, If you haven't received a brochure, an invitation, then you can get one. Don't worry if they're not there. They're beautiful, bright, printed brochures advertising the event next week. And uh, we are seeking to cover a whole number of houses in the area. So we've almost covered the whole neighborhood, but there are some roads, some streets. Thank you, Dr. Michael. There we go. And uh, you can see Jamie if you're able to volunteer to take a pile and to pick a street Go and knock on some doors. If you're not that bold, just put it in the post box. But let's saturate this area. The one mile radius particularly is what we're focusing on. And then we're not just a church, a local community church, but we are in the county, the region, and the capital of our nation. Amen. So invite somebody to come. Now next Sunday is Pentecost Sunday. Oh, we're going to have a whole bunch of unchurched people in church. And Are we going to be well behaved and have a seeker's excuse me? If that's what you were thinking, just come down here so I can give you a spiritual slap right now. This generation needs to see a demonstration of the power of God. They may not understand why we're so crazy and passionate, but when God is in the house, they will acknowledge His presence. They don't just need to hear, they need to see. So don't be afraid. 
to bring that atheist, that agnostic, whoever it may be. Next week, they need to be in church because we're believing for a mighty outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Can you say amen? We are going to be concluding our Freedom Series next Wednesday evening. How many of you were blessed by Pastor Bianca last week? We were, we were ministering out, but we tuned in to watch, and I thought she did an outstanding job. So she's going to give the second half of that message this morning. But I'll be finishing next Wednesday evening, and then next Sunday morning, we are beginning a phenomenal series entitled The End Time Anointing for the End Time Church. God has stored up the best wine for the last, the last days, the remnant church. So we'll be preaching on the end time anointing for the end time church over the next few weeks until we get to our Awake Conference, which is coming up in July. I want to tell you, there is such a stirring in my heart. We've just had confirmation this morning that David Herzog, you can go and Google him if you like, great friend of ours and of our ministry is going to be here as one of our speakers, canceled his itinerary to be here. But we're going to press in over that week, a whole week, take the week off from work, morning sessions, evening sessions. I believe the time has come. We have been in revival here and a great kids program. You want to, you want to come and add that? Um, a great kids program. I don't, I don't know anything about it. So you want to tell them in just a second? Great kids program from the ages of three, I believe, until 12. So what we're experiencing here, they're going to be experiencing upstairs. So this is an event for the whole family. I know it's the first week of school holidays. What a way to kick off the holidays. Amen. We are believing. We've been in revival now. Only God could do what he's done over these past 27, 28 months. We believe that this week's conference, the Awake Conference, is going to be the breaking through into spiritual awakening because that's what revival should be a precursor. Revival is for the house of God, the people of God. Spiritual awakening must come to a nation. So we're believing that this week is going to birth a spiritual awakening in the United Kingdom. You need to be here and be, it's going to be historic. We'll look back and say that's when it began. Can you say amen? Now quickly before Pastor Wona encourages us in our worship and our giving this morning, take out your phones and would you share the feed this morning. You know, last week we asked you to do this. We increased our reach by 100% last week. Just because of a simple act on your part to take out your phone, go on HRC Facebook page, share it with all of your friends and people that you're connected with. You're getting the gospel out. They're going to hear a word of truth this morning. So would you do that right now? Just take a couple of seconds, get your phones out, share it, and then make sure that you put your phone on silent afterwards. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, how many of you are ready for what God has in store for us today? Can you say amen? amen. During the worship, I was just reminded... Um, I'm actually in a bit of an overflow. We were joining in online to the meetings, uh, pastors and leaders meetings with Pastor Rodney in Tampa this week. And he focused on the church, um, the unshakable church. And I had just heard at the beginning of the week um, the forecast on the news channel that they're forecasting in the next 40 years the Methodist Church, the Catholic Church, and the Church of England will become extinct. And when there's this whole conference this week, the Holy Spirit said to me, Wayona, don't look at religious institutions. He said, I'm raising up an unstoppable church in this nation. A, a church that will begin to break down barriers, break down walls. And so don't listen. I, I realize don't listen so much to what the news and the media say. Listen to what the Holy Spirit says. Because He said the glory of the latter house shall exceed the glory of the former. So we're believing. That's why we have RBR. We're raising up men and women of faith. Men and women of the Spirit. Men and women of the fire who'll begin to have a end time vision who will begin to take on dead places of worship, bring a new vision, bring fresh fire and see God do a mighty work across the nation. If you believe that, shout hallelujah. Amen. So you can imagine what happens around the dinner table when the Norman family gets together. Everybody has something to say, a revelation to share. Just a quick thing before I forget. We, 
we are full again this morning. We need to break through those walls. Everything is ready and in place to put an extra 200 seats in. We want it done before the conference. Can you say amen? amen. So if you're able to help, especially sow some finance into it, we want to get done before we have the conference and also make sure that we pay for everything in cash. Amen. So we really value your support. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, next Sunday is going to be off the charts. I just, I laughed in my spirit. I thought, Lord, how can you even begin? The timing is so perfect. It's a great weekend of celebration. And we honor our queen, our beautiful queen, godly queen. But the greatest celebration is the day that we remember. Now, I know we have Pentecost every Sunday. So it's not such a big of a deal for us. But let me tell you, as Pastor Brad says, this is a Jubilee outreach event. So we're having the greatest party in the service. Don't think the greatest party will be for the free barbecue that we're giving, a thousand portions of food that we are giving out as a ministry to bless our community, to bless everybody. But we are believing the greatest party will be here before then. Can you say amen? This will be the starter. This will be the main course. We'll have, in fact, the first six courses before we even get outside. That will just be the cherry on the top outside there, but everything else will be happening inside. So if you're inviting friends and family, don't invite them to come afterwards. We've even put the starting time from 10 onwards. So get ready, get expected, come early. Come expecting, come believing to be used of the Holy Spirit. Don't run off afterwards. Uh, even if you don't enjoy barbecues, listen, with so many unsaved people, this is your opportunity to go and evangelize. They're coming right here onto this property. We've got all kinds of activities happening. So take your time and go and evangelize to every unsaved person. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. So I want to read to you this morning and uh, I'm actually I don't even know where, where I'm going I'm a little intoxicated with the new wine of heaven but we're just going to get into it this morning Mark 4 verse 20 from the amplified classic version says those sown seed on good well adapted soil are the ones who hear the word and receive and accept and welcome. So four levels of receiving the word. So they hear the word. Say with me this morning, hear the word. I receive the word. How do I receive the word? Into my heart. So the word is going forth even during the worship this morning. How many of you know the word is going forth on every level? And how many of you know that the Holy Spirit individualizes the word for every person? I mean, even know this morning, the Lord is aware of everything you're facing, every circumstance. The Lord knows even the numbers of hair on your head this morning. Do you know that the Lord watches? He catches every tear you cry. That's how well known you are by your heavenly Father. And so what He does, it's supernatural. The Holy Spirit takes the Word. So the same Word is going out this morning, but it's being received in every different way, totally differently, hundreds of different ways, because the Holy Spirit personalizes the word that's going out. So it's ready and it's ripe and it's active and it's powerful to do what God's purposing it to do in your individual life. So the second stage, how many of you ready to receive the word? So that's the second level. The third level is to accept it. Now you can say out your amen at this point because we have the choice. You see, the Word, the Lord sows the Word. He's the sower. He is the one who sows the Word. Jesus in the preceding verses tells this parable. So the Lord comes and He sows the Word by the Holy Spirit. You receive it, but then you have the choice to accept it or reject it. That's your choice. But how, let me just say in brackets, how many of you are ready for a harvest? You can't say, Lord, I'm believing for you to do exceeding abundantly above and beyond if you don't follow the instructions. 
Say with me this morning, it's important to follow every instruction from this word. This is not a word of suggestions. These are instructions for living life in abundance. Hallelujah. Now you're not excited this morning, so I can see you've got a problem accepting the word. So I'm going to push in there a little this morning because I don't want you to leave the same way that you came. I don't want circumstances to remain unchanged in your life. I believe in God. I stretched my faith along with Pastor Brad this week. We're believing for great, great and mighty signs and wonders. We're believing for supernatural testimonies. Hallelujah. So you then accept the Word and you welcome it. The fourth level. What do you do when you welcome somebody? How many of you know when you welcome someone into your home, you have the welcome mat, you open the door and you invite them in. What do I do when I welcome the Word? I put aside every barrier that I may have constructed in my mind, with my attitudes, preconceived thoughts or notions or ideas, historical references, and I just throw out the welcome mat. I open the door wide. When I open the door wide, Jesus said, behold, and He's speaking to the church, I stand at the door of your heart and I knock. He's not going to force His way in. The Word won't force its way in. You've got to open up the door. <laughs> Hallelujah. Somebody right now is beginning to grab this. You're opening up that door in your heart, opening up that door in your circumstance. Some of you have been hounded. You've been troubled by, by pressures, by concerns, by by. Uh, unholy, ungodly thoughts by temptations that you feel are just above you this morning. I want to ask you right now in the mighty name of Jesus, open up that door of your heart. Lay out that welcome mat and allow the Word to come and enter into your heart. Because when you welcome the Word this morning, the Word can begin to work in your heart. And what does He promise here? He says, and then you will bear fruit. In other words, Words, then you will see a harvest. We're looking at the harvest, but you can't forget the four levels. You've got to activate the Word. You've got to welcome the Word. That means it doesn't matter whether you like it or you don't, whether you agree or you don't. When I welcome somebody, I take them warts and all. I invite them and I welcome them regardless of anything else because I've given them access. Say with me this morning, it's access that I need from the Word. So then he says, and some receive 30 as much. How many of you ready for that level of harvest? Shout hallelujah. As much as what so was sown, some receive 60 times what was sown. Hallelujah. Now you don't sound very excited this morning. I'm saying bring it on, Lord. I'm ready for 60 times as much as what was sown. And some even received a hundredfold. <laughs> How many of you ready for the hundredfold return this morning? Come on, lay out that welcome mat in Jesus' mighty name. Pastor Adonica said something a couple of weeks ago, which I thought was very powerful. She said, in tough times, it's not so much how much money you have in the bank. What's important is how much seed you have in the ground. That's what matters. I don't care what they're saying about inflation. What I mean by that this morning is they can say all they want about inflation. They can talk about oil and gas and electric. They can talk about escalating prices come October time. They can try and throw in a couple of pennies through the Chancellor, giving a little handout here. I want you to shift your mindset this morning. Your source and your provision is not the Chancellor of the Exchequer. Your source and your provision is not your pension fund. Your source and your provision is not the Prime Minister and his government. Your source and your provision is not even your employer. And I don't care if they've given you an increase of 20 or 30 fold. Your source and your provision is God and God alone. He is Jehovah Jireh. 
the, further, the last I looked, there was no other government, no other person, no other man, no other organization called Jireh. There is only one this morning who is called Jehovah Jireh. So I want you this morning, as you take these four steps, how we've seen these four steps, you've received the Word right now. It's been sown into your heart. Number two, you can welcome, or number three, you can welcome the Word. You've all heard it. You've all received it. You have the choice to welcome the Word this morning into your heart. To accept the Word. To accept that God's going to do what nobody else can do. To accept that I serve a God of signs, wonders and miracles. To accept the supernatural law of sowing and reaping this morning. Not to question, not to doubt. Not to begin to ponder, not second guess a word. I accept the literal Word of God Almighty. That God said His Word, it's settled in heaven above. It doesn't matter if my circumstances may change. This Word will stand and remain forever. Hallelujah. This is important this morning. I just feel right now to go, you need to get this revelation. Because right now they're changing laws. Even in Scotland, changing the Word of God to suit the culture. Changing the holy act, a holy covenant of marriage to suit the pressure from the culture that we're living in. If you cannot accept the Word this morning, let me tell you, you are building your future on shaking ground, on sinking sand. You've got to recognize and accept and act on the Word of God and don't stop questioning, stop doubting, stop saying this is Old Testament, this is New Testament. All of this Word is given for our instruction. Hallelujah! and for our increase in Jesus' mighty Name. So as you sow this morning, I want you do, to do so with faith. I want you to do so welcoming, not just the Word, but welcoming the harvest. Can you do that this morning? You know, when they collect the harvest, they sing songs because they welcome the harvest. Can you do that this morning? Just welcome the harvest as you sow your seed. In Jesus' mighty name. The details are on the screen. You can give in the foyer the various methods or the envelopes on your seat. But God bless you and look forward to the 30, the 60, the 100 fold. In Jesus' name. Amen. Whether you're considering full-time, part-time, or maybe you have never considered Bible school before, this is for you. Join us for our next open day, Friday at 10 a.m. We have a new men's prayer group here at HRC on Thursday evenings at 7.30 to 9 p.m. upstairs in the Sycamore Room. Come for fellowship with your brothers in Christ as we study the Word of God. See you then. If you are a new believer or you desire to take your walk with God to a whole new level, then you are welcome to join our online discipleship classes. Please email breeder at sftn.org to register or see breeder after the service. This is a call to all married couples. We are running a marriage enrichment course here at HIC on Saturday the 25th of June from 9am until 6pm. Marriage was God's idea and it's His desire for every husband and wife to enjoy a happy, exciting and fulfilling relationship. This is what we want for our marriage and if this is your desire too, then please see Pastor John or Pastor Carol in the foyer after today's service for more information or to register. If you know of someone or a family who will be blessed by a food hamper, or if you are in need of a food hamper yourself, please inform the church office at info at sftn.org. 
Come and join us as we celebrate the Queen's Jubilee here at HIC on Sunday the 5th of June from 10am. There will be free entertainment for the whole family including bouncy castles, candy floss, face painting, free gifts, free barbecue and much, much more. Don't forget to bring someone along. Make sure to book your place for free by visiting hicjubilee.eventbrite.co.uk Last year we felt the rumble, this year we hear the roar. Last year we broke the ground, this year the rain is coming, the deluge, the outpouring. In the last days he will pour out his spirit. This is what the world for generations has been waiting for. It's here, it's now. Get ready to dream, get ready to see, get ready to run, get ready for Awake 2022. HIC. That was a lot better. Now, um, one of us is going to be a surprise, surprise today, and that's our pastor, Pastor Brad. Dr. Brad, I'm going to ask him to come. Yes, let's give him a hand. Now, now, what, what, what some of you don't know is today is his birthday. So, somebody did say, um, is it a big one? But, but I always say, at our age, it's always a big one. <laughs> but we just want to give God thanks for you, Pastor Brad. We just want to thank you for all that you're doing. And we just want to encourage you. We just want to declare that we're standing with you. We are believing God with you, and we pray that you will continue to do all that God is doing. So I'm going to ask um, Pastor John and Dr. Michael to come as they support me in this. We've got some, some cards to give with some... The, the cards are quite heavy, actually. There's quite a lot in there. Um, I'm going to ask my other fellow pastors to come, Pastor Chemery and Pastor Femi, to come at this time as we... Just want to just want to recognise Brad, Pastor Brad. Can everyone see this wonderful cake? Let me give um, Pastor Bookie a quick plug. She's done this wonderful cake. I'm an uh, her agent, so come and see me afterwards. Um, this one is free, but the rest will be charged for. But I'm going to ask Pastor John just to pray at this time, as we just lay our hands on Pastor Brad at this time, and just believe that God will just continue to do what He's doing in His life. Can I ask you all to stretch your hand? towards uh, Pastor Brad our Father we just thank you for this man, this man of God we just thank you for all that you've done in him and all that you're doing through him, Lord we thank you that you called him to this land so many years ago Lord, thank you that he responded to your call and Lord, Lord we thank you that you called him to establish his house which he has done and Lord we thank you too that he's you're building this house through him, Lord. And Lord, we ask your continued blessing upon him. Lord, that you would do all that you need to do in him and through him. Lord, thank you for the blessing he is to us. Thank you, Lord, for all that he's done in our lives, Lord. And Lord, we just ask that you continue to use him, bless him abundantly in the years ahead. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Dr. Brad. Happy birthday to you.
today truly is an awesome day. Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask you all to be seated. I have a lot to say this morning. (laughs) The Lord sent me on a real assignment. And so um, it was, I must confess, a sacrifice to give some of that time up today to dad. But I guess it was for a good cause. He deserves it. But I really believe that the Lord sent me on assignment today. And uh, I believe that there's actually going to be mass deliverance that's going to happen in this room this morning. I fully believe that. Amen. So I'm going to ask you all to just say to the Lord in your own heart, say, Lord, open my eyes, soften my heart, and sharpen my mind. Amen. I believe that God is going to do awesome, awesome things this morning in this room. Last Wednesday, we did um, the first part of this message on disappointment. And I talked about how on Wednesday, the Lord had really been speaking to me about disappointment in the church, because this is something that although it is not, um, it's not an isolated struggle to either the church or the world, it's actually something that everybody seems to encounter and deal with and fight against at at, at some point or multiple points in their life. But this is a, a particularly difficult battle for the church, because it is It's almost like when the church, when men and women of God or people of faith wrestle against disappointment, a lot of the time they don't know what to do with that pain because it seems to come in conflict with faith. And so although this is not an isolated struggle for the church, this is something that the church struggle with greater, I believe, than any other group of people. And so the Lord really strongly laid it on my heart. And so Wednesday, we dealt with the disappointment of delay. And that oftentimes delay is not denial. And, um, and this morning, we're going to cover a different part of disappointment, one that I think goes a little bit deeper. Are you ready for it? Amen. Just a reminder also to all of you guys this morning that um, as of next week, we will be opening an additional car park. It'll be across the road, across the way. And so there will be plenty of parking. We are making room for the multitudes here. Amen. 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 So this morning, I want to speak on a a deeper level of disappointment, deeper than delay, and something I believe takes a a little bit of a deeper journey to resolve, and something that I've noticed is a struggle that perhaps I and people that I've counseled, people that I've spoken to have had a much more difficult time dealing with. Are you ready? Are you ready for freedom today? Are you ready for healing today? Are you ready for deliverance today? Hallelujah. I'm going to ask you to turn with me to 1 Samuel chapter 13. And here we begin to read an account of Saul, who at this point in time is king. And, uh, and, and what I want to look at is the events that took place in the unfolding of his destruction, the destruction of his kingdom, the destruction of his reign as king. We read here that, Saul, who's still in a battle contending against the Philistines. The Philistines were the enemy of the children of God. The Philistines were the enemy of the people of the Lord. And the Philistines were consistently coming against the children of God. Does it sound familiar to anyone this morning? And so what happens is Saul takes 3,000 of his greatest soldiers, his greatest warriors. He takes 2,000 of those for himself. And this is the deal. He sends a thousand, half of his number, a thousand warriors with his son, Jonathan. And he sends his his son, Jonathan, out to battle. And he says to Jonathan, you go to Gibeah with a thousand men and I'm going to go to Mishmash. Say that this morning. He says, I'm going to go to Mishmash. He says to them, he says to Jonathan, you take these 1,000, I'm going to take 2,000. And he says, well, come once we can celebrate victory. And this is what happens. Jonathan takes half of what his father has, half of the resources, half of the manpower, half of the warriors, half of the army, and he goes ahead into battle and he confronts the enemy, confronts at Gibeah the army, confronts the Philistines head on and wins. And we see here, I'm speaking really quickly because I've got a lot to get through. We see here that what Saul does with double the forces, double the weapons, double the army and resources of his son, Jonathan, he goes to this place, he goes to Michmash, and instead of confronting head on the soldiers, the Bible tells us that he skirts around the outside. Now, this was my first point this morning, and this really encouraged me. Notice how his son, Jonathan, accomplished the victory his father wasn't able to, unable to with half of the resources. 
I believe that there are some of you who have been serving the Lord half the time other people have. And the Lord is telling you this morning, it's not about, God is not looking for people who can do big things. God is looking for people who believe that He can do big things. And so Jonathan is a great example for us of what it looks like to trust God in battle, regardless of the resources that you have, that you have acquired, when you may feel like you've been shortchanged. You may feel like you've got far less to work with than other people. You may feel like you've got far less experience, half the experience, half the wisdom, half the knowledge, half even the Bible revelation as other people around you. But it's not about being able to, in your own strength, go out and defeat giants. It's about believing that even if you have a sling and five stones, your God will come through for you. Amen. Amen. Your victory, it's not about the size of your opposition. I want to tell you this morning, it's not even about the size of your resources. It's the size of your obedience. Isn't that good news? That's good news for me. I have mastery. I have the ability to dictate my obedience before the Lord this morning. And so I want you right now to extend your faith and be encouraged that you may feel like you've given everything you have at the battle you've been in. And I came to tell you this morning, if you believe that God is big enough and if your heart is willing and ready and yielded, there is nothing that He cannot do. Amen. So what happens is Saul takes 2,000 men with him to Michmash and his son Jonathan takes 1,000 with him and Jonathan sees the victory while Saul just sits around the outside of the enemy. And this is what we see. It says soon after this, in verse 3, Jonathan tacked and defeated the garrison of Philistines at Geba. The news spread quickly among the Philistines, so Saul blew the ram's horn throughout the land, saying, Hebrews, hear this, rise up and revolt. All Israel heard the news that Saul had destroyed the Philistine garrison at Geba. Did Saul? Jonathan did. Jonathan had half of what his father took into battle. His father, intimidated by the enemy, sat around the outskirts of the enemy camp while Jonathan took his faith in the Lord and his obedience and half the resources into battle and won. Yet Saul here is literally tooting his own trumpet, claiming the victory. Quite literally. I believe that this is probably one of the first times that Jonathan felt real disappointment in his father. Have you ever been there? His father was not only his father, but his father was his hero. His father was his king. And he sees the frailty of the flesh, the humanity of the king. The insecurity of the man that he was looking up to, the rest of the nation was looking up to, to lead them into battle. And here we see the lie, the insecurity that the internal wrestle undealt with, claiming the victory for something he didn't fight while he sat on the sidelines. Arrogance will often masquerade as insecurity. Insecurity will often masquerade as arrogance. The two go hand in hand. And we see here a deeply insecure, a deeply troubled man stand up and take the credit for a battle that his son won while he sat on the sidelines. And here we have a son seeing this in his father. And so what happens is the Bible tells us that the Philistines are deeply enraged. They are so angry about Jonathan's victory there at Geba. And so what they do is they get all of their arsenal, all of the people. The Bible says that they mustered a mighty army of 3,000 chariots, 6,000 charioteers, and as many warriors as the grains of sand on the seashore to come back at the people of God. And this is what's so significant this morning. It says that not only did they go and gather every weaponry that they had, far outnumbered the people of God. It says this, they camped at Michmash. They camped at Michmash. It says here that men of Israel saw that they were in such a tight spot. Because they were hard pressed by the enemy, they tried to hide in caves, thickets, rocks, holes. Some of them crossed over the river Jordan and escaped into the land of Gad and Gilead. What you don't confront, you will recreate. 
what you skirt around the sidelines of, you will watch come back at you times 10 full force. Saul is now facing the consequences of his failures in a very, very, very big way. The name Mikmash actually means hidden thing or hidden place. And so you can see this king, Saul, completely consumed by insecurity, takes double what he would give to others and still is too afraid to confront the hidden thing that he knows is overpowering him. And what happens is he ends up being completely overthrown by the thing that he hid. I wanna tell you, I believe that it is the day is gone for the church of Jesus Christ to skirt around the outsides of things. Far too long, far too long has the church stayed silent at the altar of not confronting things to stay culturally relevant in this world. The church has for far too long sat and skirted around the sidelines of issues at the altar of being politically correct. And what happens is we can see that what you don't confront in your own life, you will see a generation have to deal with the consequences. This is exactly what we're seeing today. And what happened is by Saul not confronting the hidden things the people he was entrusted with were now running and hiding. I wanna tell you church, if we don't make a stand and we don't begin to confront the antichrist spirit and our nation head on, the generation that's following us right now will still live on the run and hide from the issues that we are not addressing. There is an attack on truth in this nation. There is an attack against the speech of the church. There is an attack against the church of Jesus Christ standing up and speaking openly, confronting the things that right now are bringing oppression and torment to the next generation. There is something very, very, very wrong when a child at age 14 can go and get an abortion without even letting their parents know. When a child of 16 can go and begin to medically transition themselves into a different gender without consent from their parents, without their parents even having a say in the matter. Yet if I stand up today on this platform in this church and say you are fearfully and wonderfully made, God does not make mistakes. You were created perfectly in Christ Jesus for good works created a long time ago. If I stand up and say to this generation that there is no mistake when God made you. Do you know for saying this, for saying exactly what I said right now, I could find myself arrested today. That's the stark truth of it. They say that people are unable to in extenuating circumstances or if they're under the age of 18 or if their mental health is not in a good way. All of these other little uh, grey areas to try and restrict the church from preaching the truth. They say for all of those reasons and more lies that I cannot stand publicly and proclaim the truth of what the Word of God says about gender issues because people may not be in a position to give me their consent to say it. Yet a child without consent of a parent is considered well able, well informed to make the decision to transition on their own. Something is wrong. And I'm telling you church today, we are seeing the price being paid in this next rising generation from issues that we did not confront, that stayed hidden and came back with a force. This is what we're seeing today. You cannot leave unforgiveness undealt with. You can't leave it hidden. Before you know it, it'll become bitterness, it'll become anger, it'll become resentment and it will derail you. You cannot leave lust hidden and undealt with. Before you know it, that lust will come back with friends. It'll be adultery, it'll be perversion. It has to be, it has to come to an end because the next generation will pay the price for it. We as a church made a decision to stand. The enemy, the the, the territory that Saul negated to occupy became a stronghold of the enemy, the very place that they, they camped to bring an attack. Many people were confused by the stand that we took Many people came at us and said that we should not be making a stand, particularly in our own nation, against our government. And this is what our response was. We will not release one inch of this territory because we know what you negate to occupy will become a stronghold for the enemy. And so we will not budge. 
Come on church. Jesus is coming back very, very, very soon. There is a lot to do in the time before He comes back. And there is an instruction that we have been given. He said, occupy till I come. Occupy, occupy, occupy the mountain of education till I come. Occupy the mountain of media till I come. Occupy parliament. Every mountain, occupy until I come. Amen. Amen. And so this is what we see here. Saul did not occupy what was entrusted him with. And it became a stronghold from the enemy. He hid from his hidden place. But that's not the first time that we see Saul hiding. If we look back in 1 Samuel chapter 10, this is right when Samuel was anointing Saul to be king. And Saul's response to Samuel was, I don't think I'm the right man for the job. Don't you know how small I am and how little I am? He said, I come from the tribe of Benjamin. We're the smallest of everyone. This was all for Saul to escape the anointing to be king and to hide away from Samuel, bringing him to the table where he'd be introduced as the next choice to lead Israel. He did everything he could to hide from the table. It says that Samuel brought each family of the tribe of Benjamin before the Lord. And finally, Saul was chosen from among them. But when they looked for him, he had disappeared. So they asked the Lord, where is he? The Lord replied, he is hiding among the baggage. I want to tell you this morning, today is the day to get rid of the baggage. Today is the last day that that baggage will plague you. You need to make a decision today. I will no longer hide, carry, be bound by any baggage. Even then, rather than taking a seat at the high table to be commissioned as king, he wanted to escape that table, escape his assignment to hide in his baggage. The day for hiding is over. The day for the church to hide is over. We are putting the world on notice today that we will not stay silent. We will not stay hidden. We will not stay still because there is a mission. It's time for the church to rise up, speak up and take a seat at that table. My Bible tells me that He even prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And so it's time for the church to take a seat at the table. It's not the enemy's table. It's in the presence of it's God's table. It says he prepares a table before my enemies in the presence of them for me. This church, the world has no say on what happens in this church. The world has no say on what we do in it. The world has not, no say on the growth of the church of Jesus Christ. It's not their table. This church, this is the church of Jesus Christ. It's His table. And my Bible tells me that the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. This nation is still His table. Right now we see it in the presence of our enemies doing all that they can to rob, to kill and destroy. But guess what? It's still His table and this nation will be saved. It's time for us to rise up, speak up and take a seat at the table. Amen. No more baggage. Say that with me today. No more baggage. Do you know that they found that trauma can actually create a chemical marker on DNA that alters your genetic structure and is passed to the next generation? It is real. What we do not confront, the next generation will face. We have to, parents, pastors, leaders, whatever, whoever God has entrusted you with, you have to make a decision to say, I will not give my children an inheritance of pain, of trauma, of rejection. And we won't skirt around the issues one day longer. So what happens is Saul is now faced with the the, the evidence of his mistake, because he did not occupy what he was instru- instructed to occupy, because he negated his responsibility to confront what was hidden in his hidden place, out of his insecurity, he's confronted with his men leaving left, right and centre, the armies coming up, everybody knows what the enemy is now doing, the stronghold they have taken occupation over. And so to cover up, 
to conceal his mistake and quickly go to battle before Saul, before Samuel comes back. He goes to give the offering to the Lord, which was not allowed to do without Samuel. And so this is what happens. Is This is where I'm really leading for this, the, the, the crux of this message today. Samuel says to him, how foolish. You did not keep the commandment the Lord gave you. you. If you had have kept it, the Lord would have established your kingdom over Israel forever. But now your kingdom must end. For the Lord has sought a man after his own heart and the Lord has already appointed him to be the leader of his people because you have not kept the Lord's command. So Saul says, Samuel says to Saul, because of what you did, because not only did you negate your responsibility to confront your issues and your baggage and deal with the enemy, but then you did everything you could to conceal the consequences. I can no longer entrust you to be king. He says, if you had have done your kingship, your rule would have endured forever. I want you to take a moment to imagine Jonathan. Disappointed again. Quite literally disappointed because Jonathan would have been appointed the next king. Quite literally disappointed. I wonder if you've ever been there. Will you feel like the failure of another person left you dealing with a mess of baggage and pain and issues where you feel like the, 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 the responsibility that somebody else negated left you broken, that you had to face the consequences of that. Maybe you've been like Jonathan and you've watched your father or your mother absent and negate their responsibility to lead the home properly. I don't know if, I, I just heard the Lord say, I was preparing this word that there are some in this room and some watching online who felt like your innocence had been taken at the hands of another person. I felt like the Lord said that there was someone who had been very deeply betrayed and because of that, that, that wound of betrayal that you've now noticed that you have a tendency to control people and it's causing destruction in your relationships and affecting the next generation. Don't know if you've ever been there where someone left you, maybe the marriage ended and because of the actions or behaviour or failure of another person, that you've watched everything that you gave your life for fall apart. When maybe your leader or your pastor or your teacher didn't encourage you or maybe they discouraged you to the point that you've become so insecure, you're seeking the approval and affirmation of men day and night and constantly finding yourself disappointed. There is a difference in the depth of disappointment when you feel like your life is at the, the mercy of somebody else's mistakes and you've watched their poor leadership or their poor parenting or their lack of understanding of love start to affect you. Has anyone ever been there? I love how Jonathan deals with this and I believe that this is the Lord's word for us today. If we look at 1 Samuel 14, it says this, one day, say one day, one day Jonathan said to his armor bearer, come on, let's go over to where the Philistines have their outpost. But Jonathan did not tell his father what he was doing. You know how I know that Jonathan had the right heart in dealing with this mountain? Because he didn't tell his father. This is how I know that Jonathan dealt with this giant without giving judgment. Because Jonathan knew in that moment that his father was actually unable to conquer the enemy. And so rather than giving his dad a lecture, rather than throwing it in his face, rather than going and flaunting what he was gonna do about the situation and everything he had going on now because of his father's failure, he says that one day he decided to go and do something about it without even telling his dad. I wanna tell you this morning, the first step and truly living out the freedom that Christ paid for for you, if you've ever experienced anything like this, is to forgive. 
You have to extend mercy. Maybe your dad never had a father either and he just never knew what to do. Maybe that person who broke you lived a life of brokenness and so this was just a consequence of what happened to them. I don't know what you've been through. I know that there's many in this generation who feel like the decisions of this government have had consequences on them. You know what? Pray for them. They don't know better if they don't know Jesus. Jonathan didn't extend judgment, but he went to confront the issue. I love that it says one day. You know why? Because one day can be today. It wasn't on a certain day. It wasn't on the special day. It wasn't even just on a Sunday. It wasn't on his birthday. It was a day like any other day. I want to tell you this morning, I don't know how long you've been contending with the issues and the baggage and the struggles and the pain and the brokenness that you've been walking around in today. If you will rise up and say enough is enough, today can be that one day that you leave it behind. So he says, let's go to the outposts of these pagans. He says, perhaps the Lord will help us for nothing can hinder the Lord. He can win a battle whether he has many warriors or a few. This is the real difference between Jonathan and Saul, Jonathan and his father. Jonathan knew that God plus me is the majority. God plus me, there can be a thousand, there can be 10,000, but guess what? None will come near my dwelling place because I know my God, my covenant keeping God and God plus me is the authority. It says here what happens next is astounding and this is exactly what I believe is gonna happen in the room today. It says that as he stood up and he went to confront the thing that his father had hidden from, says something strange happened. There was terrible confusion anywhere. The Philistines ended up killing each other. Just two people confronted the place his father had hidden from and saw great victory. It says that the Philistines turned on each other and started killing each other. But there's a lot more to this. It actually says that even those Hebrews that deserted them before, ended up coming back and rejoining his father's army. He brought reconciliation to his father, even though it's his father's fault. I don't know who you need to reconcile with this morning. It doesn't mean that you, that you make what happened to you okay. It doesn't mean that you don't come to terms with the grief and it doesn't mean that you put your approval on the situation, but he made reconciliation with his father and saw great Victory. Not only that, it says, but all of the Israelites who went into hiding when the Philistines came back, all of them came out. I want to tell you this morning that your mikmash is somebody else's miracle. Jonathan decided to confront the thing his father ran from, and his freedom was the freedom of a whole nation. I wonder this morning how much you would contend for your freedom if you really understood right now what was at stake. If you really knew how many other people's freedom were hanging in the balance of you claiming the freedom that God has for you, for yourself. I know that a lot of you in here might be thinking, but it doesn't change what happened. You can't undo what you went through. But I wanna end with this. If we skip forward a little while later, we know that David became king and he was a, not a perfect king, but a phenomenal king after God's own heart. And one day we read that this happens in 2 Samuel chapter 9. It says, one day David asked, is anyone in Saul's family still alive? Is there anyone that I can show kindness to for Jonathan's sake? It says, David sent for Jonathan's son. This is what I love about it. Mephibosheth says to David, cowering when he came before him, because what would usually happen is the next king would kill all of the family members in the old king's bloodline. When you would take over the new reign of king of a nation, you would kill every member of the last king's family so that they would not come back to usurp your authority. And so Jonathan's son comes before King David, probably not aware of what was about to happen. If this was gonna be the end of his life, he had been hiding too. Mephibosheth replies, I am your servant. 
David says this, he says, don't be afraid. I intend to show kindness to you because of my promise to your father, Jonathan. I will give you all of the property that once belonged to your grandfather Saul and you will eat here with me at the king's table. You will eat with me at the king's table. I want you to stand this morning. This is how the Lord led me to conclude this message this morning. You can't change what happened. Jonathan could not undo his father's mistakes. We can't undo the poor decisions that were made to keep this country on lockdown. Maybe you went through a business failure and you can't do undo that failure. Maybe somebody hurt you. Maybe you've been through divorce. Maybe you've lost a loved one. Maybe you messed up like Saul and made some mistakes and you're living in the constant feeling of failure, the constant reminder of what you did, of how you got it wrong. You can't undo what happened but God can still redeem. God can still redeem. The Bible says that He gave Jonathan's son everything that they lost, every bit of property, every bit of money, every bit of finance, everything was restored to him. And his son sat at the king's table. I believe that many of you here this morning, God has put in your family to redeem your bloodline. I don't know what your fathers did. I don't know what mistakes were made, but I want you to know this morning that God has placed you as a generational changer. God has placed you in your family as the catalyst for redemption. If you come from a family of unsaved loved ones, maybe your fathers, maybe your mothers, maybe your grandfathers have a lineage of divorce. I want you to know that you are the changer. You are the catalyst to redeem your bloodline. I believe that we are the catalyst to redeem the church in this nation that we're not gonna make the same mistakes that our forefather made. We can't undo them, but we believe that God can redeem, God can restore, and that the Lord's gonna use us powerfully and mightily to see this next generation on their knees before Him. It starts with us. It starts with us this morning. I believe, as I said at the start, that there's gonna be mass healing and deliverance around the room. The things that you have kept hidden, Maybe you've never come to terms with what you went through. Maybe you never came to terms with what your, your family did, the failures of your past. But today I believe that there's gonna be freedom, that you can let it go and find healing in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's bow our heads this morning. The Bible says of Mephibosheth that when he was a child, Somebody dropped him, a servant who was meant to be taking care of him, dropped him, and he became crippled. And I believe there are people in this place this morning, as you've heard this word, it's resonated on the inside of you. There are things that you felt and parts of your identity that you couldn't understand, things that were missing that you couldn't quite place, but you knew something was lacking. Somebody dropped you. Something happened, it wasn't your fault. And you've been in Lodabar, a barren place, an isolated place, long enough. I believe that today the King has come looking for you, even as Pastor Bianca said. He's come to Lodabar, sent His Word to find you in those places of barrenness and brokenness. And He's saying, come, there's a seat for you at my table. Hallelujah. Not just healing and restoration, but retribution. Come on. Things that you lost out on, things that you thought you would never recoup, never regain. When you allow Him to bring you and put you at your seat at the table, restitution will come. And I believe that today the Spirit of the Lord is saying, it's payback time. It's payback time. I'm about to turn mourning into dancing, sorrow into joy, lack and loss into abundance. Not just for you, says God, but for those who will come after you. Hallelujah. Come on, just press in this morning. Just press in this morning. 
There is an anointing of deliverance and healing and breakthrough in this place. But before I invite you to come and receive a touch from the Lord this morning, as every head is bowed, there are people in this place and you didn't know that the King was looking for you. You don't know the Lord Jesus Christ. You don't have a relationship with God, the King of the universe. You felt like you were not good enough, never would be of any significance for Him. He's looking for you. The Bible says He searches for you. He's calling your name. He's saying, is there anybody in this room this morning that I can show an outpouring of my love and my mercy and my forgiveness to for Jesus' sake, because of Jesus, because of what my son did. You might be watching on television, watching on the live stream this morning. Is there anybody at the sound of this voice this morning that I can show my love to? He loves you. He loves you. He loves you this morning. And right now in this place, if you know that you just need to submit, surrender, give your life to Him and say, Lord, here I am. Thank you that grace finds me this morning. I am lost, or I once was lost, but today I am found. I want you to put up your hand right where you are. Come on all over this room. Lord Jesus, today I'm surrendering my life to You. I'm giving my life to You. If that's You, quickly get out of your seat. Come down here at this altar. We want to pray for you right now. Come quickly this morning. If you need that, know that today is the day that you need to surrender your life fully and completely to the Lord. Come quickly. We're waiting for you this morning. Come on. God bless you. Come on, there more this morning. God bless you. God bless you, sir. God bless you, man. Is there anybody else this morning? Come on, what you're sensing right now. That's His hand on you. God bless you. God bless you. You're hearing Him call your name. Deep on the inside, you may not understand it. That's His love. Reach it. Bless you, man. God bless you this morning. Is there anybody else? Come on, I want to give just one more opportunity. One more opportunity. Come quickly, come quickly. There we go. God bless you. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Won't you reach out your hands towards them this morning? You are witnessing the greatest miracle on planet Earth today. These are lives that right now are being snatched out of the kingdom of darkness, being put in the kingdom of light. These are people whose eternities were, were about to be destroyed and stolen. But today, their eternal destiny is secure. Right now, an angel in heaven is writing their names oh, in the Lamb's Book of Life in bright red crimson blood of the Lamb of God that was slain. Come on, the Bible says heaven rejoices. Why don't you rejoice this morning with heaven over these lives today? Would you pray with me? We're going to pray together to support you this morning. Would you say, Father God, thank you for your great love that reaches even to me today. I have heard you call my name. I have heard you, Lord Jesus, standing at the door of my heart, knocking, knocking. Today I open that door. I ask you to come into my life. Wash me. Cleanse me of my sin. Forgive me today. I receive you as my Lord and Saviour. I repent, I turn away 
from my past life 360 degrees I'm going in the opposite direction today I'm going to follow you all the days of my life thank you for saving me thank you for cleansing me thank you for redeeming me today thank you for receiving me and making me your child in Jesus name Amen and Amen Hallelujah I'm going to ask you to follow this lovely lady and the team here for just a moment we've got some Bibles for you and some information that we know will be helpful and you can come back into the service in just a moment so if you follow her to your left and to my right hallelujah well I want us to press in for just a few moments this morning and we want to pray for some people we're not going to be much longer but I believe there's an anointing in the house this morning to break people free for some things and to pay back retribution and anointing to take back some lost things this morning So while we worship, I just want you to come down very quickly. We're not going to draw this out. Let us just pray for you this morning. Stand in agreement with you this morning. Come quickly while we press into worship this morning. Hallelujah. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power.
we lift our hands in worship as we praise your holy name you deserve the glory and the honor lord we lift our hands in worship as we praise your holy name for you are the dedicate this morning I'm going to ask that Enoch and Beth and Andrew and Janine and Martha and Guy come up this morning and stand here with me as we bring little Tobias Jada and Ella before the Lord to be dedicated this morning would you bring them up bless you guys as you come The Bible says that they brought children to Jesus that he might bless them. And the disciples were indignant and they actually turned them away. And when Jesus saw it, he said, what are you doing, guys? He said, suffer the little children to come to me. Because to them belongs the kingdom of heaven. And then he went on to say, whoever does not receive the kingdom like a little child... will not enter it and then he even went a step further and he said you know whatever causes one of these little ones to be led astray it'll be better to go and tie a concrete block around your neck and go and cast yourself into the sea the bible says that he gives angels special charge over the little ones what a charge what a responsibility we have as a family Eileen, where are you this morning? Would you come and join us down here, please? To be bringing these little ones before the Lord to dedicate them this morning. And uh, we want you to reach out your hearts, reach out your faith this morning, reach out your hands towards them. Father, we thank you for every mom, every dad here today. Thank you for these beautiful families. Father, we thank you for these precious gifts of love, these children that you have entrusted to us because we are their family today do you realize that we have bonds that bind our lives together that are far stronger than any biological genetic ones we have the bonds of the spirit come on we have the same supernatural life of the holy ghost these are your kids this morning these are your family members this morning and, and we have a responsibility even in these days in which we're living to come alongside them and to encourage them and support them. You pray for these kids like they're your own this morning. Would you do that? Amen. So guys, as you brought these precious gifts of love this morning, my goodness, you guys just keep expanding and being free. I can't keep up with you guys. I think when you arrived here, you just had how many? Three. Hallelujah. So we want to ask you this morning as you brought your little ones 
to be consecrated and to be dedicated, will you provide for them a Christian home of love and faithfulness? And will you teach them not just by the words that you speak, but by your own lives and your own example, what it means to serve God? And will you be living testimonies? We heard this morning in the words that Pastor Bianca brought of the importance of the legacy, what we leave, what we imprint upon our children. Are you going to be reflections of the Father heart of God in all that you say and all that you do? And are you declaring before heaven and earth and all of us today that you are going to commit to have the Word of God as the foundation, the only foundation, the absolute truth for your home and for your family life? Amen. Tobias. <laughs> He's so beautiful. <laughs> Pastor Waona, I think you have the, the touch this morning. You're going to hold them. I'm going to pray. Would you move a little, come a little forward here, you guys? Father, we thank you this morning for little Tobias, Mark, Anthony, Andrew, John. We thank you for Enoch and Beth as they brought him today to be dedicated. And Lord Jesus, I put my hand upon his head today and I consecrate him, dedicate him to you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. We declare today... Tobias, you belong to the Lord. Angels who are being entrusted to watch over him, guard every foot, every step he takes, that he would walk in the ways of the Lord all the days of his life. Hallelujah. Thank you for the great heritage of music and of worship in both of his parents, Father. Raise him up as a mighty prophetic psalmist in the house of God, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And Father, we thank you. We speak and we declare blessing over him all the days of his life, in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. So there is his first Bible. Love you guys. Father, we thank you for little Ella this morning. Oh my goodness. She is, you too. look at that face. Sweetheart. Father, we thank you for little Ella today. My God, what a precious gift of love she is to her parents. Father, we pray today as I lay my hand upon her, Ella, I consecrate you, dedicate you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Father, I thank you that from Ella's earliest years, she will know she doesn't belong to herself, doesn't even belong to her parents, but she belongs to you. Thank you for the good plans and purposes that you have for her. Anything the enemy intended for her today because she is consecrated to you. Father, thank you that it unravels, it is brought down, it is destroyed today. But that, Father, she will walk in the fullness of the blessing of God all the days of her life, we pray. In Jesus' mighty name. Lord, thank you, Father, as voices come. And the influence has come that she is going to be resolute to the point of stubbornness in terms of knowing what you say, knowing the truth of your word, that she will not deviate. You said, raise up, train up a child in the way they should go when they all they shall not depart. She shall not depart from the course and the word of truth, we pray in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen and amen. You know, when Andre and Janine joined our church a 
number of years back now. You can see it's been quite some time. They, they found us first. They were looking at relocating their house. And they said, before we decide where we're going to move, we're going to find the right church. Do you remember? And uh, you guys traveled in for so long. You've been so faithful to this house through it all. Put up with us through it all. <laughs> and uh, we want you to know that we love you this morning. And uh, love your family and love you too, sweetheart. So would you reach out your hands and your hearts this morning? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for Jada this morning. Father, we thank you for this beautiful, precious little princess. Thank you, Father, that all the days of her life are recorded in your book. That's what you promised in Psalm 139, as you have planned and purposed for them to be. Father, we thank you today that she shall live according to that plan in the name of Jesus. You said plans to prosper you, not to harm you, to give you a hope and to give you a future. Thank you that Jada has a bright and a glorious future filled with possibility and potential. We declare today that not one word of limitation that anyone or label that anyone would try and put on her. Today we take it off in the name of Jesus. We say blessed and highly favored of the Lord. Father, treasure of the heart of the Father. So Father, we consecrate her to you today in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And all the people of God said, Amen and Amen and Amen. She's just fallen asleep. Would you stand this morning as we share communion together as we close today? Thank you, Father. Bless you this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We worship you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood applied. Thank you, Jesus, you have set me wide. Thank you, Jesus, you have saved my life, brought me from the darkness into glorious For the blood of life Thank you, Jesus You have washed me white Thank you, Jesus You have saved my life Brought me from the darkness Into glory Let's take of the bread this morning as we eat it together. Thank you, Lord, for your body that was broken for us. Thank you, Jesus, that healing is ours for every wound that you bore. Mighty God, doesn't matter how the enemy of our faith tries to wound us, break us, hurt us, mar us, destroy us, even from our earliest years. Today, as we eat of this bread, we are reminded that you didn't just heal our relationship with the Father, Jesus, but you heal us everywhere we hurt. You heal us everywhere we're broken. You heal us with your shalom today because you came to make peace between us and the Father. Shalom, nothing broken, nothing lacking. Nothing missing today as we eat of this bread. We thank you for our great spiritual inheritance. We thank you that God, we take back by faith everything, not just our so great a salvation, but our healing, our prosperity, because you want us to walk in health, prosperity, and healing, even as our soul prospers today. So we eat of this bread. Thank you for the so great a salvation. Every promise of God that is yes and amen today because your body that this bread represents became a curse on the cross that we might walk 
live 24-7 in the full blessing of God. Can you say amen? Come on, let's eat of the bread and let's celebrate this morning. We don't mourn the cross. We celebrate the cross. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And Lord, we thank you for the cup today. Thank you for the blood applied. Thank you that this blood is applied right now to the doorposts, the lintels of our hearts, of our lives. Every access point into our experience, our future, our present, the blood is applied to the access points today. The enemy cannot come in. Come on. I said the enemy cannot come in. You've got to live day by day. 1 John 1, 7. Let this blood, even as you walk in the light continually, as He is in the light, the blood is washing you, cleansing you, restoring you to righteousness, right standing with God. In other words, bringing your life into supernatural realignment with everything that the Word of God declares about you as you drink this morning by faith. Get ready. I hear some doors creaking. I hear some things dropping into place this morning. Come on, let's drink. Let's be thankful today. Thank you for the blood, Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, that's communion like some of you maybe this morning have never experienced before. That's how we're supposed to take of the table of the Lord. We don't mourn. He's coming. He said, do this uh, until I come. Hallelujah. Well, God bless you. Thank you for being with us this morning. Remember, extra parking from next week. Remember, we need people to help knock out those walls. In the next 14 days, we need volunteers. Sign up in the foyer. Register for next week if you haven't yet done so. We're going to have some fellowship. And while we do, you guys are going to sing something. You can stay and sing or go and have some coffee and fellowship in the cafe. God bless you and thank you for being here today.